Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Well, we are in the classroom right now <laughs> and our professor for today, professor in quotes, by the way, is Mr. Olumide Olumile. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for joining thank us. So now, uh, we're focusing today on the coat of arms and the flag. Do you know what the coat of arms represents? What about the horses and the other things in it? Do you know what they stand for? Well, Mr. Olubenle is going to tell us, but before he goes into the coat of arms, uh, we need him to quickly just give us a few, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, the, 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 the major points about the anthem and the pledge. Thank you so much. Morning again. Um, Nigeria. Right now, the narrative is moving away from the body called Ni Nigeria to either constituent parts or to individuals. And we need to move the narration, the narrative back to Nigeria. The national anthem says, Arise, O compatriots, Nigeria's call. Obey. And the pledge tells us, I pledge to Nigeria, my country. Nigeria, my country. We need to return back to looking at the goal as Nigeria and not an individual or a group of people or a geopolitical zone. Yeah. Right. So, <clears throat> what does a coat of arms, that expression, what does it mean? Okay. Um, I guess we take a lot of our... Um, what we do from the British people. So you will find out that institutions, families, and um, body corporates always have a coat of arms. So it's representative of who you are. It speaks of your aspirations. Mm -hmm. It speaks of your, if I may say, brand promise. Mm -hmm. Who am I? What do I promise you? What can you get from me? So I, I would say that's the that's okay. coat of arms. That's our that's, coat of arms. Yeah. If, if we can have, have a picture. <laughs> Let's have it back on the screen. Um, Mr. Lugbenle, yes, right. if you look at the coat of arms, it looks very beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, is, I mean yes. if we had the two white horses, the yes. red eagle, yes. and see the greenery. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our setting is, in, is a river. sunset. Yes. Or the sun, yes. Basically, yes. a sunrise. But see the coat of arms as it is. It's the amazing. The eagle, it's, it's, the two horses, yes. the Y in the middle of that shield mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. representing the mm -hmm. Niger River Benue coming mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And uh, the yellow down there, the yes. green and the, the red greenery. flowers, and all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Beautiful, yes, it is. But how many of us, we, we don't really pay attention to it. How is it that we don't pay attention to this? Which, as you said, the coat of arms historically represented families or individuals or represented institutions. How is it that we do not pay attention to this? What gave us that impression that this wasn't important? I guess over the years, um, the founding fathers of our nation were well tutored. They, 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 these were well uh, uh, programmed people. So they paid attention to creating that which was ours. And I do believe that it was owned at the initial stages. But along the lines, just the same way we've dropped the ball on many, many things. We've dropped the ball on this as well. Like, oh, it's just one of those things. I probably didn't even identify with the symbols and what it meant until my adulthood because nobody gave it to us, nobody taught us, nobody presented it to us. It may, they are there in certain documents, but nobody's drawing attention to it. And until you are deliberate and intentional about such things, the American will cry for, for uh, their anthem. Are civic studies back in schools now? I believe a bit of it are back, uh, but not as intense and deliberate and intentional as it should be. We're in a crisis point. We need to reprogram Nigeria. I was in a conference yesterday, and the bottom line is, yes, we need to restructure. But beyond restructuring, we need to reprogram the typical Nigerian, even in the military. Um, we've had trainings for them. And one of the two of them have confessed that, you know what, before your training, I had lost hope in this mm. project called Nigeria. Mm. Very and few people still believe in the nation called Nigeria. Yeah, I, I'll tell you something. Um, I was playing tennis at my tennis club the other day, and by the center court is the Nigerian flag. Mm -hmm. At 6 p.m. every evening, some guy or two guys come, march to the flag. 
and bring the flag down, one standing at attention or something, or Sadhu taking the flag. And I said, everybody stop playing. The flag is coming down. We need to stand at attention. And they all you looked at me like, for, for what? You are an alien. <laughs> I said, for the flag of Nigeria. That's what? Everybody just um, ignored me and continued what they were doing. But we were not brought up like that. We had to respect the flag. When the flag was being hoisted, or it was brought down at 6 p.m. every evening, we had to pay respect to the Nigerian flag because it was important. So how come we lost all that? Now, People don't even notice that the flag is going up or is coming down. They don't pay any attention. There's an ordinance, Ordinance 48, the, uh, the Code of Arms and the National Flag Ordinance 48 of 1960 that tells how the flag should be treated. Nothing should come before it. Nothing should be higher than it. Um, it goes up the at way six. It should, it should be folded. The way it should be folded, mm. the size. In actual fact, the national flag should not be sewn. It should be one piece, not three pieces joined together. But until people are taught this, the national flag should not be dirty. It should not be in shreds. You even go to institutions today that should know better. It's not there. We've lost, maybe apart from when we are playing soccer, there is no emotional connection. We don't even understand that the flag is symbolic of who we are as a people and what we present to the world as who we are. Let's talk about the symbols. Yes, I don't know which one you want to start with, the flag or the coat of arms. But let's look at the okay. significance of each of them. Uh, could we have it up? up which of them? Uh, the coat of arms. Let's, let's have the coat of arms, please. So those who design coat of arms for various people, they have various names for uh, bits and pieces of that, but I won't go into all of that. Um, we will start with the black shield. Mm -hmm. The black shield there is symbolic of the rich and fertile earth that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, right on top of the shield is the wavy band, which is also called the paw. It's symbolic of the confluence of our two major rivers, River Niger mm -hmm. and River Benue. We'll come back to talk about the significance. Mm -hmm. So, in there, you already seen the inland waterways overlaying the rich black earth that we have. Black okay. meaning earth. Mm -hmm. The earth, yes. Now, on top of that is the green and white fold, okay, which also goes back to our national flag, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about pretty soon. And then on top of that is a strange uh, uh, one, is the eagle. But why red? Don't ask me, I, I, <laughs> but we'll talk about what the eagle is. Now, holding up the, the, uh, the, the, the black shield are two white horses or chargers. Okay, you could call them chargers or horses. Um, they are in off-white. Okay, they symbolize dignity. We'll come back to that. Now, they are all that... The two, the two charges and the shield is resting on green vegetation, which symbolizes the vegetation that we have across Africa, uh, across Nigeria, Nigeria. Your pardon. Mm. Now, we know there's uh, climatic change. People are moving down south because of drought and all of that, but we'll talk about that in the rural. Now, interestingly, on top of the green uh, vegetation are six, and I wonder why six. Maybe... Somebody had seen into the six future. geopolitical zone. <laughs> this six yeah. geopolitical zone. Maybe you can never say. Uh, is the flower that is found typically all over Nigeria? It's yellow, and it's called Costus spectabilis. Why it is depicted as red here is still something we need to research in history. Now, on top of that is the gold crest or the gold band, and on it is our motto which used to be unity, faith, and freedom, or something like that, but has now been changed to unity, faith, peace, and progress. So if I were to speak to each of these now, I will start with the last one. For some reason, I, I, I believe that uh, the God of creation, whom we pray to in our national and particularly in the second stanza, has directed our leaders and is teaching our youth the truth to know just by that motto. I see it as a progression. If we are going to have progress as a nation, real tangible progress, we need to start with unity. 
it is non-negotiable. We need to find a way of speaking and achieving the unity of Nigeria. The second thing we need to do from there is faith in this project called Nigeria. How we do that is the topic of another day. This social studies is helping us. So after we've had faith, we've had unity, faith, the next one is what? Peace. Peace. It is after we have faith in this country we can begin to do things that will all go well for our peace. And then we will get to a place called progress. But now let's go back. Now, our code of arms speaks of our national aspirations. I'm sure there are different offers, different possibilities for, the, this one. for that. And this was when men were men, if you, if you know what I mean. People really believed in Nigeria. They sat down, possibly prayed. Even if they didn't, the God who put this together must have said, okay, you okay this. So this was okay. So the black shield speaks to the black earth. Nigeria is a blessed country. When we come to the flag, I'll speak more of that. There is no part of Nigeria that cannot grow food. There is no part of Nigeria that cannot sustain life. Mm. Okay? Now, on top of that is what God has blessed us with River Niger and River Benue. It's not just water to overflow its banks. It speaks of transportation. I, I mean, I always imagine, why can't we make that a route for love boat? You want to get married? You join a boat cruise anywhere there and sail up to Lokoja. Have all, some all in the spirit of Valentine. Yes. <laughs> have some fresh fish at the confluence of Lokoja, and then you're back. So why don't we have inland waterway transportation. And I, I know it's coming up, but that speaks to a lot of possibilities. There was a time I was um, in Mombasa, and I saw a lot of white people, some birthing, shopping, and I could just imagine how much uh, tourist dollar was being spent. We have opportunities here. It shouldn't just be for those who are prayer merchants or for those who are uh, 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 social miscreants. That's, that's a possibility. Okay? Mm. Now, again, the fold, the white and green, when we come to the flag, we'll talk about that. Now, at the top of that is the ego. That speaks of our pride and our strength as a people. I mean, recently following the U.S. ban, people are beginning to talk about the enormous energy Nigerians uh, are displaying all across the globe be it academics, be it science, be it research. That's be, I mean, have you met any Nigerian anywhere? He would, the first, even if he doesn't have money in his pocket, he will tell you, do you know who I am? Anywhere in the world, Nigerians just have this. And it's not something we are faking. It's just us. It's just us, you know. We, we bring a strength and pride to humanity like no other like no other. Now, if you look at the two chargers upholding them, those, that speaks of our dignity, what we are in the midst of Committee of Nations. You can't push Nigeria aside. You can't push this nation aside. Uh, we may be injuring ourselves and undermining ourselves, but that tells us that we are a people of dignity. We are a people of dignity. And then the Coastal Spectabilis, is a wild flower that is found all over Nigeria. And that tells us of the unity that Nigeria presents. We are one. We may speak different tongues. We may have different uh, tribes. But we, if you go back to our old national anthem, though tribes and tongue may differ, in brotherhood we stand. And then we've already spoken about the motto. So in, in essence, uh, that, those are the... Uh, items that we have in the coat of arms. Yeah, David A.A. A. says that the color of the Costus Spectabicus, yes. the yellow trumpet on the coat of arms is yellow it's and yellow. never red. Yes, but this was depicted as red. That no, is the but, question. Uh, I'm actually the, looking at something here. A yes. bill was put forward on November the 28th, in the month of November sometime, to That's have um, a bill to correct some anomalies in the flag and coat of arms of, of 2004 on Thursday in Abuja, past your second reading in the House of Representatives, that is in 2012. So Any details as to what do no, no detail as regards that bill yet, whether it's been signed into law. But so far, all you, mostly what you find online, the Costus Spectabilis is... Um, Costus Spectabilis. Put as red with red. the yellow yes. edges around it. Now, you've talked about this... But again, 
sorry, so, sorry to cut you in. One of the things that we know about the color of red and graphics, it speaks of power. So anytime you see somebody presenting in red, he's, he's speaking of power. I, I was going to ask that? you, we've been talking about, the, when you got to the eagle earlier, yes. you talked about, you said you will come back to the eagle. I'll come back to the eagle. To, no, to the fold, the green and white. You also talked about coming back to the eagle. Why is, why is the eagle there and why is it red? Okay. Why do we have that? Okay, like I said, red could be a, a, um, um, uh, an intention to speak subtly of power. Anywhere you see red, uh, strong, you know, strong mm. bold, courageous, audacious. Yeah. And then the eagle is, is the pride of the avarice. Uh, when the eagle flies, it flies. It doesn't fly. It soars, and it goes. It, it, it soars the highest. It doesn't struggle. It allows the wind to carry it up, and it moves in the direction of the sun. So it's a very visionary bird, and it's very swift. If it sees a prey on the ground, in one swift move, it comes, picks, and phew, it goes. That is pride. That is strength. That is Nigeria. Mm. Now, someone is concerned. He says, Uwana Joseph says, when the country is sick, things like a coat of arms, the national flag, are forgotten completely in pursuit of daily survival, food, etc. Is that enough? I mean, yet yeah, circumstances around us, are they enough to stop us from seeing these items of our identity? As a there, there is, there is um, uh, a quotation that comes from the Christian scriptures that says when the people lack vision, when they lack the capacity to see a better tomorrow, they cast off restraint. And that is what we have today. When you sacrifice the lofty heights for the daily needs, then that's, that's. But so a number of people, the, the issue here is a number of people do not even know that we have a picture of the lofty heights. Mm. Mm. People talk about the American dream. What is the Nigerian dream? That's what the social studies is trying to bring to the fore. Okay. So we need to know what they are. Um, Emmanuel Ayewa says social studies goes along with history. Both should be brought back fully into our schools to encourage patriotism and love Correct. of country. Correct. You, wait, you said you would talk a bit about the flag as we wind down okay. now. Let's look at the flag. Okay. So the, the flag is made up of um, three parts. Uh, in 1959, when we were going to cut over uh, to the Federal Republic of Niger to, to, the, to Nigeria, uh, a competition was done for people to present. And a young man then who was studying electrical engineering in the UK, uh, Michael Taiwo Akinkumi, put in a bid. And uh, his, graphic, his representation won with a bid of adjustment. So what we have today is not what he submitted. What we have today is what was finally approved, having edited what is submitted. Mm -hmm. What did they take out? They took out the sun, and we'll come back, we'll come back to that. So we have two equal parts, two, two uh, parts that are green, and we have a part that is white. Now, the green speaks of our potential, natural resource potential, particularly agriculture. And then the white speaks of peace, and it also speaks of our riverine uh, our power. Now, so this is telling us that Nigeria needs to focus a lot of attention on its agricultural potential. Our schools should focus on it. Our financial institutions should focus on it. Our research institutions should focus on it. And not just planting things, but the entire value chain. Full stop. Mr. Olumide Olubinle coming to enlighten us about our coat of arms. We haven't looked at the national anthem mm. and the flag before today. I wonder what we're going to look at next week. We're still there. Well, you've got to tune in to find out. Mr. Lubin Lee, thank you very much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Sunrise will be right back with another interesting conversation. Make sure you join us.